welcome back to My Name Biblical Truth. This is Ken Record, and uh, we are in our series uh, on biblical uh, critical uh, theory, examining this uh, fantastic book by Christopher uh, Watkin. And this week we're uh, uh, discussing chapter one on the Trinity. Uh, also, if you uh, wish to join a Zoom discussion group uh, uh, with us, it's uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the USA. Uh, you can uh, email me at the address uh, shown on the slide. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, join us. Uh, also, if you if you live in time zones uh, between. Uh, uh, India and Western Europe and are interested in Zoom meeting at 6 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, uh, email me. If there are at least three people interested, I'll host a Zoom at that time. So, Trinity. Trinity causes a lot of confusion. Sometimes it causes people to tear their hair out trying to understand it and leads us to avoid this doctrine. Uh, but Watkin puts it uh, first up in his uh, uh, book, and I think we'll, we'll see why. Uh, he calls it uh, indispensable and foundational for a Christian understanding of reality. But can we understand ourselves without understanding the Trinity, I think is the key question. And can we have a true perspective of our existence post-creation without knowledge of what existed pre-creation. He points out that ultimate reality is personal. That is, God is personal. A uh, secular uh, view of origins may be reduced to things like strings, wave packets, or quantum fields in the physics. Um, but these are finite, impersonal components of the universe, of the creation. Um, the biblical view is that God is the ultimate reality, and God is personal. There is nothing before him. God cannot be reduced to subatomic particles or waves. Colossians 1.17 says, And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. I love that verse because it uh, um, sp speaks to uh, Jesus holding all things together and he holds all things together until it's time for them to come apart and be renewed. Uh, no other so-called gods are pre-existent or impersonal. Um, because this is distinctive, it is essential. God as a person makes sense of our concrete universe. How can that be? C.S. Lewis says, unless the origin of all other things were itself concrete and individual, nothing else uh, could be so, for there is no conceivable means whereby what is abstract or general could itself produce concrete reality. Uh, so if personal, personalness uh, is preexistent, then it has uh, a divine dignity. The alternative is that personalness evolved, in which case it is just an undignified accident of no more value than spilt milk. In humanism, universalism, and environmentalism, these theories uh, assume that everything that exists is just a combination of matter, time, and chance. Therefore, nothing that exists can have any dignity or importance over anything else. This results in the undignification of human beings, of no more value than rocks or insects. But if personalness is irreducible and fundamental, then all persons have worth, and dignity cannot be taken away. Uh, quoting Watkin, I, I think this is a really important concept. Like dignity cannot be taken away. If it's something that we received from God. So it's to summarize the alternatives, it, it, it's like it's either Trinity or triviality. 
John Frame, a theologian, in his book, The Doctrine of God, says, either we live in a universe in which everything personal eventually reduces to the impersonal, or we live in a universe in which everything impersonal can be traced back to the personal God. So ask yourself, which one is more dignifying, more satisfying, or more desirable? Unlike false gods, the person of the triune God is absolute self-sufficient. Uh, and uh, Watkin diagonalizes the absolute and the personal. Um, the one, one, one end, you have the ultimate reality is absolute, and the other extreme, you have ultimate reality is personal. There are many religious choices that fall into the absolute or personal gods of the spectrum, but only Christianity offers God as a relationship of a few. So the diagonalized solution uh, Watkins calls absolute personality theism. Interesting term, one that I think he might have invented. Um, only absolute personality theism can fully represent reality. And then he gets into the personal, the absolute, the arts, and the sciences. Uh, I love the way that he he integrates uh, sciences uh, and the arts uh, throughout this book. The Christian doctrine of an absolute God made it possible to pursue scientific investigations because a knowable God has created a knowable universe. Similarly, Watkin argues that God's personalness provides a basis for the study of the arts and humanities. Uh, because the sciences, on one end, are impersonal, described as the third person, uh, and the arts are personal uh, and experiential. I've modified these labels slightly from uh, what's in the book. Ultimate reality is relational. Relationship in the Trinity is also self-existent, existing pre-creation. God does not invent relationship. He is relationship at his core. The Trinity solves the dilemma of choosing between one, that is monotheism, and many, polytheism, by merging three into one. <laughs> the Trinity is distinguished by destroying each heresy and yet accepting everything useful from each, Gregory of Nyssa. Uh, this is really a fundamental uh, a thing that's going on in diagonalization, uh, as Watkins describes it, is that biblical uh, uh, diagonalizing concepts or doctrines uh, are bringing together everything useful from each extreme, but leaving out everything that's not useful. It also solves the, the dilemma of choosing between defining your life as part of a collective versus uh, an individualist life. Uh, most of our cultures in the world today break down into either individualism or collectivism. It's either me, 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 or we. Uh, so the Trinity diagonalizes between traditional societies that are communally oriented or have a communal identity uh, where the individual can be crushed um, and modern societies that have individual identity where community can be neglected. Uh, Watkin, to quote Watkin, the Trinity sets relationships of mutual service, mutual respect, and mutual flourishing at the heart of reality. So collectivism versus uh, individualism uh, we saw strongly in the COVID era um, uh, where um, um, the many uh, criticized the few for what they saw as um, uh, s saw uh, the exercise of individual freedom as being a selfish act against the community. Um, but the individual uh, sees the uh, the top-down um, mandates of the uh, uh, collective as 
against their personal freedom. So which is superior, the one or the many? How do we balance the needs and rights of the many versus the needs and rights of the one? Why is it that those advocating policies supposedly in favor of the many always involve abdicating power to one or a few leaders? Uh, Watkins says, those who operate the levers of the state do not seek to eliminate privilege per se. They attempt to eliminate privileges that rival their own, the checks and balances on the state's protected position. And we see a lot of political pressure today to break down uh, the checks and balances in the uh, government of the United States. So love is the ultimate reality. This is the most beautiful thing about the Trinity. Love is fundamental because it existed within the Trinity before creation. One of the most powerful arguments for the uh, value of a triune God versus monogod is that a monogod cannot experience a love of others prior to cre creating anything uh, because he has only himself to love or herself in some cases. This is a radical departure from how the gods of pagan religions would be defined. Uh, because the false gods are capricious and selfish. This, the, most false gods are modeled after man. Uh, John, the apostle uh, of love, uh, says in 1 John 4, 8, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. And in 1 John 5, 3, in fact, this is love for God to keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. In 2 John 1, 6, and this is love that we walk according to his commandments. And then he talks about this uh, alterity, violence, and love. Alterity is uh, a word we don't see uh, used very often, uh, but uh, it means uh, otherness. Uh, to reject the otherness, the uniqueness of others, is a violent act reducing others to our idea of who they are. We see this a lot in, in modern social uh, 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 theories where uh, they want to uh, pigeonhole uh, uh, everyone of a particular class or, or race. Walker says their individuality is reduced to a symbol, their uniqueness to an idea. The Bible doesn't do that. Some of the common misleading statements we hear in culture today are, no one can judge me, and you do you. Walken questions the effects of taking the avoidance of uh, re reduction of others to extremes. My take on this is that a full embrace of otherness results in total separation between people. They no longer have anything in common. They are like two shapes that will never fit together in any manner. Mistaken worldviews pretend, for instance, that a square object fits in a round hole. Watkins says that the, the love relationships of the Trinity provide tools that help us to understand uh, sameness and difference in a way that is honoring and intimate. And John frames it uh, in the in the Christian Trinitarian view of the world, quote, there is no unity without plurality and no plurality without unity. Or as you say in the United States, uh, out of the many, one. On the on the one hand, I cannot fully uh, know another person but it also cannot be fully disconnected from them. We both share the image of God and his love. My take, we might say God love them about those that we struggle to love as God loves them. The Trinity marries inalienable dignity, a dignity that can't be lost, with incomparable intimacy. Hmm. 
It's an intimate freedom. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, intimate, connected, but distinct. And the ethics of love and violence, uh, I just note here that uh, the word violence in Hebrew is Hamas, same name as the the uh, 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 Hamas uh, uh, group uh, opposed to Israel. Uh, in this uh, representation here, we have uh, uh, a mythical war of the gods where Marduk defeats Tiamat. Uh, and creation, creation myths uh, are are mostly uh, violent, unlike uh, the Bible. Uh, Watkins says, modern political thought is built on an ontology, which means like a framework of violence. Uh, love can only occur when power is abdicated, which is true for the Trinity, because each member of the Trinity uh, is united and and also submitted to each other. And this is true for our relationship with God and our human relationships. Watkins well, says the difference is not between power and love, but between power expressed in and as violence and power expressed in and as love. In modern social theories like critical race theory, violence is fundamental. Will is used to exercise power with violence. In Christianity, love is fundamental. Will is used to give up power in order to exercise love. My take is, will we relate to the world with love or violence? Will we emulate the Trinity or emulate the dark forces, the enemies of God? And in fact, God says to us, either you do you or you do me, which will be, as Jesus said, Follow me. There is dignity and intimacy in the Trinity. Self is given to the whole without loss of individuality, as represented by these pictorials. So for discussion questions, um, uh, take one thought from this chapter and write a note. Uh, that you wish you had read five years ago? I like that question. Why is the Trinity an essential doctrine? And how do you see it differently? Uh, what, in your own words, is the difference between living in an impersonal universe versus one that has a personal origin? And what does absolute personality theism mean? How does the biblical uh, God provide a basis for both the sciences and the arts? And how is biblical loving power different from modern social theory power? Uh, and stop here and uh, uh, go back and think about those questions. And I challenge you, pick one question and share your answer by using the comment box on YouTube. We would love to hear from you. Here's my think about it question. If your worldview differs from Christianity. How does your worldview dignify human beings and unite them so that they can flourish together? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this uh, brilliant chapter by uh, Dr. Wagen on uh, the Trinity. Thank you um, that you communicate uh, uh, your nature your trying nature to us that is the model uh of love of and of loving power uh uh you're a marvelous uh, uh god lord uh let me thank you in the name of jesus uh, amen uh, as usual please subscribe uh and uh share with a friend invite them to join us um uh, in this journey uh, you can communicate with us directly on YouTube or at info at biblewinding.org. Also, there are PowerPoint downloads of the slides in this presentation uh, at that website, as well as other resources. And as usual, we, we thank you so much for watching and uh, wish you a blessed week.